It's Joshua from Parent Pro Tech, and today we're talking about app tracking. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, have you ever been on a phone or a tablet and seen something like this pop up? If you're like a lot of people, you probably just tap one of the options and move on really quickly, and you don't think much about it. But today we're gonna to talk about what actually is going on when you see that thing pop up on your screen. Anytime you download or use an app, apps collect certain information about you and they collect a lot. In fact, the average app has six trackers in it. That means they are monitoring six different specific details of things that you're doing and activity on your phone. <laughs> yeah, it's a little freaky, but it's actually happening and it's important to know about it. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? I have a list here of just a few things that apps could be tracking on your phone. I'll read you a few. Your purchase history, your recently visited locations, your occupation, your contact details, your favorite music, your in-app purchases, your phone number, your profile pictures, your hobbies, your interests, your messages, your favorite brands, your favorite bands, your date of birth, and the list goes on. This is a ton of information that apps are collecting about you. In many cases, you don't even know it's happening. Now, if you think this is crazy, it gets even crazier. So if you have all these apps collecting information about you, there's even other groups that compile and combine all of that information to make a complete profile of you. The things you like, the people you talk to, the places you go, the list goes on. And you might be wondering, how does that happen? Well, every device has a unique identifier. Apple calls it the IDFA, Google Android, they have the Android ID or the GAID, and all this means is it's a unique identifier to your phone. It's like your phone's social security number. <laughs> yeah, it's like your phone's social security number. If you go on Google and do this, and then you go on Spotify and do this, and then you go on Instagram and look this up, and then you go to some other app and look at something else, all of those apps that are collecting information, it's all linked back to that unique identifier. And then, once that information is pooled and all that data is put together, they have a complete picture of here is who you are and what you're into. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Okay, at this point, you might be wondering, why? <laughs> I mean, I get that all of this happens, but what's the point? Why would companies do this? What do they get from it? It's all about money. Companies can sell data to advertisers because advertisers want to put ads in front of people who they think might be interested in their product or their service. And so with all that data that gets collected from apps and from all of your activity, then companies can say, oh, that person, you, might be interested in whatever you're interested in and then advertisers pay money to get their ad shown to people that look like you, talk like you, act like you, have interests like you, go to the places you go to, listen to the music you go to. It's crazy. For example, sweaters. I'm wearing a sweater. I like sweaters. Okay, if I'm a sweater company, I can advertise and pay money to get my sweaters shown to people who maybe live in cold climates, who like to be warm, who, uh, you know, there's all these thoughts of, of how advertisers can target people. And so, you know, they're not gonna show a sweater ad in Hawaii, but they would in New Hampshire, or they probably would in Maine or Antarctica. So next time you open up an app with a spot for an ad, think Instagram, TikTok, maybe even before a YouTube video or on that favorite game that you like to play. When you see that ad, Think about how much money an advertiser spent to advertise there. But even more than that, think about what information they have about you that makes them think that you would be a good customer. And if you think the craziness ends here, <laughs> you are wrong because it gets even crazier. So even after apps have collected data on you, even after these other groups have pooled all this data and made a full profile of you, even after it's been sold to advertisers, and even after advertisers have paid money to get their ad in front of you, the tracking continues. And there are tools in place so that advertisers can even see if you followed through and bought that item. Or maybe a day or two passes, but you went back and looked at it. 
your IDFA, your GAID, your Android ID, that unique identifier, it's still there and they're still tracking you. So not only are they trying to get an ad in front of you, they want to even monitor how you react to it and what you do in the times that follow. So if you ever feel like you're being watched, it's because you are. But after all this, there is hope. Apple has rolled out this cool thing called App Tracking Transparency. Those random notifications and pop-ups that we mentioned at the top of the video, those are actually here to help you. So if you download a new app or a new game on your phone and you go to open it and it says, do you want this app to track you? Allow or ask not to track? When you hit ask not to track, it will cover your phone's unique identifier. When you hit ask not to track, it will hide that IDFA number that we talked about. So that app, that platform, no longer is able to build this full profile on you. They no longer are able to connect all the dots. They don't see all of that information. It's something to protect you and to protect your privacy. And don't worry, even if you have allowed apps in the past to access all that information, you can change it. You can go to your privacy settings in your phone and you can turn that feature off. When Apple first rolled this feature out, many companies were even worried because they said, how are we going to know that we're showing accurate ads to people? So that's the downside. When you don't allow these companies to track you, the ads that you're seeing aren't going to be as spot on. They might not be directly in line with your interests, your hobbies, your passions, but at the same time, you're protecting your privacy and you're not sharing nearly as much of your personal data with companies and with advertisers. So one more time, how does this all work? It starts with you downloading an app. Then when you accept app tracking, you're giving that app permission to track you and your activity. Then your information is collected and a full profile of you is built. Then other groups and companies combine all of this data using your phone's unique identifier and they sell access to that information. And lastly, all of your user profile is used to show targeted ads to you. And the companies don't stop tracking there. They keep on tracking you as long as you let them. Next time you see that notification pop up on your phone or you get an ad, think about everything that went into you seeing that exact ad. Maybe go look up sweaters and see how long it takes you to get a sweater ad because who doesn't want a sweater just like mine? <laughs> Probably no one, but it's fine. I'm Joshua from Parrot Pro Tech. We'll see you next time.